Now, you go back, you Google that video, and you watch Willie Galt here. <laughs> oh, I don't remember it. I'm telling you. That, mm. well, Refrigerator pier and all that. I was, it was, it was right. so much fun. Yes, yeah. it was. So anyway. And did they win? Yeah, sure. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember. Yeah. I, I probably... Uh, yeah, imbibed too much of the Super Bowl party. <laughs> we also have Reagan Oglesby, Ladyfingers, Catering Company dot com, and Franco. We're on Facebook now, so go to the Mary okay. Conley W R A G page, and we're going Cheers. to toast you. Salute, salute. Here's salute. to salute. 2019. Yes, absolutely. Which will be here in less than a week. And I'm looking forward to 2018 being over. Why? It's just it was a lot. A lot <laughs> happened in 2018. It was a it was a jam packed year. There's it no was a jam packed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. like to stay busy. You have like. Three businesses. I What's do. What's wrong with jam pack? I like you know when Noah was jam pack with <laughs> politics. And you think death. 2019 is going to be any different? You know, We've no, already but started you know the what? presidential campaign. By yeah, the way, I, what are we drinking? So this is called the Mary Beth. Oh, oh wow! This is a limoncello, uh, oh. a splash of limoncello. We have some prosecco in there. Okay, Ooh. taste and that. And raspberry, strawberries, and then this is not mint. This is spearmint. This is comes from There's my a difference. There is. Spearmint's got... Uh, it's not as it's strong. It's like the gum, right? So the spearmint is not as strong. It's not right. as... It has, a, it has a sort of mellower, minty flavor to because it. Because the Mary Beth is very yeah. mellow. Yes, it and is. And minty. Yes, it is. You didn't really name this. I did. Me, did I did you, invented did you invent it? Yes, absolutely. So you'll see... Is this like Actually, a bunch the of Actually, the comes down... No, the limoncello comes down to the bottom a little bit. So it, it really does. It settles. It's got a nice oh. flavor to it. Mm-hmm, it does. You don't have to oh. put any... You know, just get it cold, drink it, and then these are... This is frozen berries, and it works better with that just because it keeps it colder. Franco, but, I, I like never it. had a drink named hey, after me. We take me. care of you. Don't worry about it. I tasted oh, the wow. lemon and it came through my nose. I can yeah. smell it. Like <laughs> the best lemon, just remember this. Lemon, it, it, I'm telling you, lemon is the MSG of Italian cooking. This is something that you need to have. You can put into any dish, and it enhances the flavors of everything, really? including these. Like these lemon ca- zest? Zest, lemon juice, anything really? with lemon. It's a, It tends to be a bit more, bit more of a southern thing, right? The mm-hmm. southern uh, Okay, it, I have a Italy. question. But... Like in food, like oh, yeah, when you're I'm making sure. pasta. Oh my gosh! Oh my really? god! Yes, they do. Uh, How have I lived 59 years and not known? There that? is a sauce from Sicily. It's called moigu. It's got an odd. The the dialect is different, but it is. Uh, if you take like your best uh, pomodoro sauce, mm-hmm. they're putting whole lemons in this, big chunks of lemons. Really, in this. the flavor is unbelievable. So that's your yeah. secret, huh? It is. At Franco's it's easy. Day. I don't do anything. I just throw lemons in. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I, I mean, I put lemons in. We just put lemon in our sweet potato pie. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get that nice yeah, zest out yes. of it. We do it in our aioli. We do it in our okay. a lot of our pasta dishes. How do you know not to put too much? Because I always figure if a little's good, a lot's well, better, and that's not true. Zest is more concentrated, right? So for me, it, it's just you, you're just going to put a pinch in there because the zest is really going to bring it out. The lemon juice is is difficult because it tends to it tends to dissipate. So for instance, when we made this past weekend, we made uh, spaghetti alla vongole, which is spaghetti and clams, right? Okay. I don't use lemon juice. I use the zest. So right at the end, you hit it with a little bit of the zest. And it just brightens the Brightens juice? it up, makes it so, come alive. So are you saying, like, Mary Beth, go back to the whole Mary Beth is effervescent and it is. bubbly. and it's yes. bright. I- I'm needing it's a little. It's exciting. Uh, it, 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 you need I, some stroke it's, it's in today. It's tantalizing. I do. Wow. It's as good as it gets. I've never been called tantalizing. <laughs> I might have you back tomorrow. Wait, I'm not here. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry. Go back to why 2018 suck. Well, I take oh. a picture of the Mary Beth cocktail because I got to, I got to post this, man. My ego is like the size of this. Now you know studio. we're spelling Mary Beth M E R R Y. Oh, there thing. you go. Yeah, there I go. like that. Okay. That is cool. So why did twenty eighteen start? No, it was, it, it was. I think it was an emotionally draining year. We had a lot of high profile passings. A lot yeah, of yeah, true. it was you know. And I the mean, Burt Reynolds went off passes. That's a big year for for three A's. The funerals were going yeah, off. That's true <laughs> yeah. for, right. for President Bush. You know, we just had John a lot McCain. Of, uh, you're right. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it was just John McCain, President Bush, Aretha. That was a whole Aretha. six oh, day, Aretha, yeah. Goodness, you yeah. know, funeral. So I mean, it was just a lot. You know, and then every day it's a in the news cycle with politics. It was just a negative, honey. I'm afraid 2019 is gonna really. It's gonna, it's, you it's don't gonna like be politics. Yeah. 2019 is gonna. Burn yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do when when 2020 gets here. Well, to, I'm telling you, the presidential campaign's already started. Oh, it's yeah. gonna be a brutal. It's gonna be a bloody. So, and then you know, just a lot of work. And but but I I have a love hate relationship with Facebook. But they, you know, now they're doing the the memories of your the mm-hmm. highlights of mm-hmm. your 2018. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, some good stuff really did happen. <laughs> I almost forgot. I was like, I had two kids to graduate. 
from college, well, one from graduate school and one from high school. So I was like, okay, so, we had some fun. Graduated. We had some fun, but uh, you forget. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. here's a good thing about 2019. We get another crack at it. So. Yes, we get another crack. <laughs> right, God. so I'm so yeah. ready for it. I'm like, I get to start this thing over. Right. <laughs> and you're starting it with the Mary Beth. Yes. yes. Uh, An ever-bubbling <laughs> bubbly drink. Yes. Can we mention that again? Beth. Yes. Minty. Light, light Minty. on the spirit. <laughs> Effervescent. Effervescent. I tell you, Franco, you know the way to a woman's heart. Right. Yeah, stroke that ego. Okay, so when we have, we have two chefs, okay, because, so, and I don't, you know, Reagan, you, you're doing a lot more corporate work. Franco, invite him into your home, have a party. What's the biggest party you've done where everybody cooks? Because you do them where everybody is the, in the kitchen the, cooking. Yeah, dinner. and it, it gets down to the size of the kitchen, and mm-hmm. the home we're in, but yeah. uh, 15. We did 15 ladies in, mm-hmm. in a home in uh, Olive Branch. That's a lot. And it was a big house. I bet that was yeah. fun. It was a blast. Because they drink. Yeah. yeah, so in between each course, uh, I don't have to think too much. I just have to pour a little bit, and then yeah. it, gets, you know, the, it gets progressively better, but... You know, uh, you could throw yeah. this whole name a drink, invent a drink, and name it after the host, there you man. There Repeat you go. business there right you there. Go. <laughs> it wouldn't even hurt my feelings since you did that for me first. Well, our parties usually last about three hours. This one went on for a while. So. I'm sure. Fifteen <laughs> ladies? I bet. Trying to get all those ladies on the same page? Oh, they were so much fun. It was so they much They probably fun. were just had a great time. So what, um, what do chefs prepare for Christmas dinner? You first. Reagan? Me first? Well, Frank, Franco, you want to go Franco to go first? Oh, I'll go first. Yeah, all right, go first. So ours is, a, you know, it's all Italian, obviously, what we do. And, and we tend, it, we sort of do a play on the seven fishes for Christmas Eve, right? Even though, just understand this, the, the whole seven fishes thing is really not an Italian tradition. It's more of an Italian-American tradition. Really? Yeah, is it's it like not, a Catholic thing? It sounds like a Catholic uh, you thing. You know, yeah, because Vigili, which is the evening before Christmas... Uh, Fred would, Gili? I thought that Vigili. was... Vigili. Oh, I was going to say... Fred Gili is the You watch the Christmas box. story yeah. all day. <laughs> the lamp. So Vigili is uh, the night before Christmas, and because you're still in sort of that fasting mode, you know, it's or not eating meat... I wasn't. They would do all the fish. <laughs> okay, right? gotcha. Now, uh, so in Italy, they have... Uh, they'll eat fish, but they don't do it as a as a well, program. Well, you know well, what I mean? Wait a minute. Is it during Ad- Advent? The, the real no. serious Catholics fast, or when? When? Oh, I, you're I talking grew- about Lent. For, yeah, yeah, right. For Lent. right. Sure. Well, so, they give up something. You know. Oh, right. But yeah. what's the fasting during? Like well, they Friday, don't eat no meat. meats on Fridays, and just oh, sort of normal gotcha, stuff, right? Gotcha. And then Vigili yes, has true. come down to where okay. before the you're sort of in this. Mary Beth is not a practicing, obviously not. It's been a while since I went to Knoxville Catholic High School. So, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. It's a period of deprivation before the big celebration. So they would have the fish. But in in, in the United States, they would do this all together and have these seven fishes. And, And I remember as a kid, my aunt used to have plates of calamari and plates of clams and all the other That's things. You know. cool. Oh, it was marvelous. So what I do is this combination. It's sort of a zuppa de pesce. It's like a bouillabaisse, right? Mm-hmm. So you're trying to – we've created this – in Tuscany, they, it's called uh, cachuco alla Livornese. So Y'all have c- such pretty names. <laughs> yes. So cachuco does that, I mean, right? that just sounds pesce. good. Yeah. You know, that's just oh like – I'm not so a good just... cook, but if I made cachuco <laughs> – Everybody would be there like is. lining up. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So I made it when, when you weren't there last time. Oh, see, uh, on Live But we at made nine. it on uh, Live at Nine. And uh, so that's what we did. Big, big thing of it like this. It's like a, a fish pot. stew? Maybe? Yeah, exactly. So we take uh, uh, crusty bread. You mm-hmm. grill it on both sides. Okay. You can rub it with a little bit of garlic, you know. Okay. And then you put that in the bowl, and then you pour the stew, the fish oh, stew, oh, over God. the top of Yum. it. Yeah, so it's not a pasta thing. If you put pasta in it, it would be sort of a... Uh, Chalpino, sort of a San Francisco thing. Yeah. Right? You, so you but cook. the bread gets nice. And oh, it's oh, marvelous. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so what are the seven fishes? So that can be anything. It, what did it, you it, do? Mine is has uh, shrimp. It's got calamari. It's got scallops. We've got a chunk of uh, there's uh, salmon in there. There's you, you got to find a firmer oh, fish, right? Okay. So and then you have crab. You can put anything else in there that you wow, want. Wow, I wish I'd been at your house. Oh, it's Christmas. spectacular! It's and then clams and mussels and. And this is you know. what they eat in Italy. They eat it, but it's not. It is not this sort of seven fishes program that we do in the United right. States. Gotcha. Right, gotcha, gotcha. So you'll always have the, a ton of fish dishes on the pl- on the table on in Christmas. Italy, but not necessarily saying it's seven fishes. That's an gotcha. American thing. 
you know, but we do I'd it like anyway. I'd like to go to Italy for Christmas. Wouldn't that be cool? It's spectacular. It runs from December 6th to uh, January 6th. It's I'm a whole you. sort of, you know. Those Europeans yeah. know how to they do, do, it. They do know life. Yeah. They really do. Americans and, could learn a lot. Oh, my you know, goodness. They, they enjoy it. Yeah, they enjoy life. It's the journey. Yeah. 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 Whereas we're working all the time, and then we take one day and throw everything at the wall. <laughs> and we wonder why we have more knifings. On Christmas Day right. than any other day. Of I year. didn't know that. Yeah. Family that drama. We do. Yeah. We do. You know. A lot of family yeah. drama. Yeah. Oh my God. Or why we look at it and go, wait, that went fast. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> exactly. And we just right. have a big mess because right. you do everything all at once. Okay, so what'd you fix, Miss Reagan? We did Try something to keep different. up with that. I know, oh. right? It is nothing like that. But we did a seafood feast. So we did crab legs. You uh, did? Why? Yes. So what do you usually do? We Don't normally do a like bit. Ham? I'm very traditional. But my mom, you know, my mom had gallbladder surgery. Plus, she signed off cooking. A couple yeah, of years so she ago. was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm not in the mood. I don't feel good. Yeah. You take over." So yeah. she, I was like, "Well, Ashley is a good cook. My daughter from New, uh, well, she's from California right now. She's living in California." So I was like, "Okay, we'll do the the Christmas dinner." So we're just kind of talking about some, doing something different, and so we came up with the seafood feast. Wow. And so we had catfish, um, lobster mac and cheese. Um, we had crab legs, shrimp, sausage, corn, potatoes. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So you were here, you were a witness. Before the show, she said, oh, just the usual. <laughs> no, I said nothing basic. I said Lobster it was kind of basic. Mac and cheese. Kind of basic. <laughs> no, there's nothing basic about Greg. Am I right? Greg look, had a Swanson's. Look at the caliber of chef we have here. Yeah, <laughs> Greg had a Swanson's TV dinner, okay? And I, I had mac like and a... mac cheese all the time. I know, right? There is nothing. <laughs> See, it was basic. Mac and cheese. He eats With mac lobster. And... Well, we had no, the lobster no. in it, but actually we had to make it special. But that's what we had. Um, I should have come to your house after Franco. And tons of dessert. So yeah, it, it was different from from the traditional because I'm I'm really yeah, into brining yeah. my turkey and yeah. all of that. But it was it was a hit. So we were you, outside okay, so frying you, the fish outside. So when you go off the radar, off the off the map, it people don't go. Oh wait a minute, this is not Christmas. Well, you know they were kind of like that's different. Okay, you know there were there was some trepidation about some things, and then um. But they liked it. But they loved it. They was like, this is really good. Next year, you And my do thing it. is, yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm a great cook. You thought it was going to be trash? <laughs> and next year, you can say, hey, it's because it's of the a, Feast of the Seven Fishes. There you go. And it's right. Right. Now it's a tradition. Catholicism, yes. we make it a feast day. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I think that, they, I think that they're going to want that every year. But everybody had a wonderful time. I had cocktails. It really turned out really much better than I thought it was going to turn out. How many out. people? Um... 25? Holy crap. Yeah, I can't it, imagine. Now, let me tell you something. For 25 people. Oh, well, I cook yeah. for 400, 350, 400 I'm sorry. people. So, cook now. Here's had, the thing. Now, I this had is eight and I was stressed. Now, this is what now this is the stressful <laughs> part of me cooking for those 25. Having a partner, my husband helped. He doesn't understand the concept of time. Mm. And he my pace is different from right. his. And he is isn't. He he. Well, oh, you also have an eighteen-month-old who somebody right. had to watch. And, and let me tell you something. In my and my eighteen-month-old, if he s- knows that twenty-five people are coming over, he shows his re- his rear end. Of course he does. He's every, eighteen months I mean, old. Every That's single time, and he's a perfect little boy. Right. Any other day, oh, you're you're having company. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> scream the entire day. <laughs> I mean, it was it was to a point I gave him a. A pot top, a pot lid, and some Christmas wrapping paper. And he I was like... <laughs> Go have fun, right. <laughs> Mesmerized. I was like, I know that this is a, oh, so this all of... You have to time out all of your dishes. You right, have to make sure he, they come out at the right time. Right, and see, my exactly, husband yeah. doesn't understand that. But and my profession is going to always come out when I'm cooking. Right. And, I, and, and, to, and also... Okay, I don't translation, like, she was bitching at Mario. <laughs> well, you know what? Well, I try not to because I don't want to spoil the mood. Right. I want to keep everybody nice and... Translation, <laughs> she was bitching at Mario. And on the inside, because I was like, I need him on board because he has a lot of fish to fry outside. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't run your help off either. Right, exactly. So it's a fine line. You got to get in somebody's butt and then convince them to stay with you. Right. Right. So, you know, that's you know the hard part. Is. Sure, it is. Sure, it is. You got to get on them, and no, you don't want them to walk out. So, I'm starting, uh, you know, two o'clock in the morning. I'm making, I made 
uh, 48 meatballs. I was oh, making I wish they were so delicious. Sausage. I'm sorry. Oh, what is relaxing about getting up at 2 in the morning? Well, you know how Christmas. to. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something. It's quiet. It is. You get your work done. You get Y'all your stuff done. Y'all are clearly professional Now, because cooks. I didn't go to bed Christmas Eve until 3. Why? Um, That's I would, because fun. I had to bake cakes. And, and y'all, y'all enjoy Jeez, this. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, people are not talking to you. <laughs> y'all are weird. It is... I get my best work done. Yeah, it's perfect. Over after midnight. So, Franco, when did you come up with the Mary Beth? Oh. Uh, I actually, you know what? It's funny because I had come up with a cocktail for the last uh, TV show. And uh, we put that together. That one had okay. some ginger in it. Don't tell me you named it. Who was filling in for me that day? Nina. Uh, don't, don't tell me you named it the Nina. No, no, no. You no, named no. It, it was the actually Nina. called the Illinois, 9 o'clock. Oh, oh, okay. So well, we, we had a cocktail yeah. the last I was about time I was jealous. on the show with this yeah. one. Oh, and I had that yeah. cocktail Saturday night. You did? Girlfriend. <laughs> you had, uh, you had, Honey, I, picture this. I thought you were going to be still asleep juice. from Wednesday oh. to Saturday night. <laughs> oh. See, I like, I, I don't like the taste of alcohol, but I like the effect. Sure. <laughs> so it's pineapple juice, Grand Marnier, and lime. Yes. Oh, you, you can't beat that. Can't beat it's a great it. combination. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's not quite the Mary Beth because she didn't name it after. Well, we want uh, the, for the one we did for the <laughs> Alanove, we froze uh, uh, pomegranate and oh, um, and rosemary in ice cubes. Ooh, that, oh, I mean, yeah. that was so cute. Yeah. Oh, it was really festive. Y'all are so Greg. Do you can you even? Relate? We had some fun. With it. <laughs> no, I don't do any of this kind of stuff. <laughs> you and me, we're Stouffer's people. <laughs> Let's face it. <laughs> I, eat, I eat ramen noodles. He's drinking like old stuff. Now let me tell you something. I just said I made a, some ramen noodles. And I put I made an Asian sauce. Of course you did. And added shrimp and blew my daughter's mind. She was like, "This is out of the cup." I was like, "Yeah." Of course the you packet. Can take, the packet yeah. of flavoring is not good. Right. It's not good enough. Because I was like. I'm going to make ramen, but I'm going to, you know, add some other stuff to it. So we had some onion in it. We had an egg in there. It you was know, so it ramen. to life. Ramen's <laughs> pretty good by itself. <laughs> well, you know well, what? I've been telling her, I was like, that's not real food. That is not food. <laughs> that is this not is why food. These this, people... Now, let me make this. This will be food. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> this is why these people are chefs, and Greg and I are we're Eaters. broadcasters. Just come, yeah. There you go. That's it. I like we to go into the mystery it. cupboard. Let's see what we got here. Da, 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 oh. And then we make it. Yes. So I good. totally have a show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll talk. Okay, so up next, if you're on Facebook Live, check this out. This is the Wells Lock. We're going to, um, well, we'll tell you what we're going to do. For those of you not on Facebook, there's the sound effect. This is supposed to keep your food fresh. For a whole lot longer. So who better than to test this than, than two chefs? Okay, so we will be right back on the Mary Beth Conley Show. Plus, what dinner guest are you? We'll find out next. We'll be right back with more of the Mary Beth Conley Show on KWAM The Voice. Hey gang, this is Ben Shapiro. Beginning January 7th, we're launching a brand new radio show. It's going to be awesome. We've got the same hot information, great commentary you've come to expect. Plus, we're going to bring you the nation's best thinkers to discuss issues that concern you. More of the things you've come to expect from the best radio show on the planet. I can't wait to bring you my opinion on a daily basis. It all starts January 7th, 2019. The Ben Shapiro Show. Weeknights 6 to 8, starting January 7th, on The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Talk radio for the Mid-South. The Earl Farrell Show, weekday afternoons at 3. Keith uh, Peluso, he's a, a voice contestant, uh, he's on Team Blake. I was watching the night you came out, and they said uh, you were from, uh, actually, Germantown, Tennessee. Uh, and then I'm sitting there, oh, please make him good, please make him good. <laughs> Uh, but you yeah. came out and blew everybody away. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate it. It's a, It's been a wild ride. The Earl Farrell Show on KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. The holiday season is traditionally a festive time of year with plenty of Yuletide cheer. But for many MLGW customers, it's still a time of need. This year, Memphis Light Gas and Water wants to make your season a little brighter through its holiday bill break program. The annual program defers cutoffs for non-payment for all residential customers between December 15th and January 14th. To qualify, you must have an unpaid balance of $399 or less. To learn more about holiday bill break, visit MLGW.com. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Oh, 
What? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Hi, Norman Goldman here. You can hear my show from 10 p.m. to midnight right here on KWAM, the voice for the Mid-South. We teach law, civics, and politics. We use the news of the day as a diving board to get into the deeper issues, to find out what's going on in Congress. How does the Constitution govern the relationship between the federal government and the states? What role does the courts play? We take the big issues in the news. We look at the world from a whole lot of different angles. I think you'll learn a lot. Do join me right here on KWAM, the voice 10 p.m. to midnight. The Mary Beth Conley Show on KWAM, FM 107.9, and AM 990. Join KWAM on Facebook. Just go to KWAM The Voice. And welcome back. It's Women's Wisdom Wednesday on the Mary Beth Conley Show, where we do not promise you wisdom, but we always promise you some laughs on FM 107.9 and AM 990. We're The Voice, talk radio for the Mid-South, kwamthevoice.com for everyone everywhere else, or on Facebook Live, the Mary Beth Conley WREG page, and I've placed the Mary Beth, M-E-R-R-Y. Why, exactly, right? yeah. This is a cocktail Buon created Natale. by Buon Franco Contaldo <laughs> of Franco's Italy, francositaly.com. That's named for me. I'm so honored. You know, some people get ships named after them. Nah, I want a cocktail <laughs> named after me. That's a real, that's the real deal, Franco. You know the way to my heart. I'm sensing it. I like it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to live on that all through 2019. <laughs> Nothing else good has to happen to me. We have Greg Ratliff. He is the PA announcer for the Lady Tigers. When is the next Lady Tigers game? That would be this Saturday. And they're doing well? Uh, all right. Well, their PA announcer is doing fantastically. Sure. There you go. <laughs> you can also interact with Greg at grizzlybearblues.com or vivaalbertos.com. And the uh, Lady Tigers is gotigersgo.com. So if you want to know about sports, hit Greg up. Everything. You, someday we're going to do an entire sports-themed show. And I will be silent for the whole hour. It'll probably be very, very highly rated, actually. Um, <laughs> All about and, the Bears. Yeah, exactly. The Bears this year. It, this Bears. might be the year, you know? I know. I still. What's Mike Ditka doing now? Uh, Mike Ditka doesn't know what he's doing right now. Is so, he? Has yeah. he lost his mind? I, he's oh. in doing some crazy commercials. And, uh, uh, that's I too don't bad. Know. I yeah. always liked him. I thought he was a great coach. You know. But we all oh, get well. them, so what are you yeah. going to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Franco Condaldo, francositaly.com, and Reagan Oglesby is always here on Wednesday, ladyfingerscateringcompany.com, medcleansolutionsllc.com, and a new company, omniresidentialservices.com. Omni Did residential I get it right? Living. Damn, nation. <laughs> why? It's you okay. know, it's going to take I me about it's... six months See, to get it right. See, this 2018, I sprung a new business on you. <laughs> That's right. Just You're out of the blue. I am overwhelmed. I'm always overwhelmed by you. I've been overwhelmed by you since the day I met you. So anyway, you know what I told her the day I met her? Literally walked into the studio on Live at Nine. Mm -hmm. She was cooking. And I said, you need to have your own TV show. Yes, she did. Yep. I lit, yes, she did. Just sunshine. Yes. In person, oh, you're so sweet. In, in personification of sunshine. Okay, so give us the recipe for the Mary Beth. So it's just a, it's a splash of limoncello on the bottom. Okay. You don't want to stir it and up too much, right? And that's a liqueur? Yeah, that's a liqueur okay. from Sorrento area, from so just southern a splash, area, like right? a Naples. Half inch uh, at the bottom. About that, bottom. yes. Okay. And then you're going to put. Uh, make sure you, you follow that with frozen raspberries, frozen strawberries. Okay. Um, and then you fill it with the prosecco. Prosecco right. is a wine. Prosecco wine, is right? a sparkling wine. A sparkling mm -hmm. wine, like a champagne. Like a champagne. Okay. It's a it's a it's a sparkling wine. And There's about seven know. regions in Italy that that are allowed to make prosecco. Dry though, where. And the reason you want to use that, say, as opposed to a Moscato or even, uh, you know, you can use champagne. You can just use a dry champagne yeah. because the limoncello is very sweet. Okay, okay, so you don't want too much. You don't want to do it. And you don't want to do, or you want to do unsweetened uh, fruit. 
Don't and, use a sweet. Frozen is better. Frozen, yes. Because so then it keeps convenient. everything cold, right? Keeps it cold. And that's convenient. Yeah. Because let's face it, this time of year, we ain't got fresh. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And then and as then, far as the uh, the uh, garnishes, that's not mint. That's spearmint. Okay. And I like spearmint, as we talked about. And spearmint. if we can't find spearmint, you or, can use mint. Okay. You should but be we growing mint in your yeah. yard. I should. Yes. I'm yeah. not. I, this so is, well, I this, this year, you will. Oh, okay. yeah. you got yeah. plans. Yes, yeah. because I've got a cocktail named after you. Got <laughs> yes. Yes. Now you have to have a plethora yeah. of have spearmint it. That's exactly in your right. backyard. <laughs> okay, so we're holding up the Wells Lock, and what here's what I'm going to do. These are, let me read this. This is a new product, and it's patent pending in like 30 countries. Okay, it has been, well, it's already been patented in nine countries. It's patent pending in 30 it was created by a Samsung engineer, and here it's supposed to be leak-proof, airtight, and thus it will um, keep your food longer. But it also says it does not retain tomato sauce stains, which certainly is good do. for me, right? Yeah, very good for you. <laughs> or dishwasher, dishwasher detergent markings. I'm not sure what that means, but... And so you, you open it and you... So it slides. We had a hard time opening it. And it slides back, right? So it slides. Hold yeah. it up for Facebook. Okay, there All it is. Right, okay, so. so what we're going to do is I'm going to give one to Franco and one to Reagan for like a month. And then we'll reconvene and we will see. It's yeah, I will be honest. I'm ready. I'm going to be song. honest. You have my Absolutely. word. I will be honest with Absolutely. Because I can't think of anybody who would be more um, critical of this kind of thing. And I do love storage containers. For one thing, if I think this would be harder to lose because, you know, have you ever noticed that the lids of Tupperware types of products, they're with the socks. You know, when you <laughs> wash a pair of socks and you come out with one, you put two in the washer and the dryer and then you come out with one sock. The the Tupperware lids are in the same place. I have, have to you tell you, I am that? a fan of Tupperware, though. I am. I do like Oh, it, I love Tupperware. Know, but I'm this just one. Yeah, yeah. Maybe these would be a little I, easier to keep track it of. It looks like it has... It looks like it has that that thing where you're not going to lose it, right? Because where's it going to? It doesn't sit on here unless right. you're it's yeah. in place. So We're going to have something. Yeah. So there you go. So we'll find out in a month. Okay. So right. so stay tuned for that. We're in. Okay. So what type of dinner guest are you at family holiday parties? Here are the choices: the holiday super fan. Yes or no? Are you a holiday super fan, like the one who starts on November twelfth? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm thinking Reagan could be close to that. What? Well, you order matching pajamas for your entire family. Which like, is I, impressive. I do. Isn't that impressive? <laughs> Every year. And she has a baby. I do. And he was so cute in here. God. And we have the name. But when did you remember to order those? Cause, well, see, let I, me tell you what I do. I put in my calendar. Oh, you're so efficient. She's a super To fan. remind me to order my pajamas. You're so efficient. Because, because they you have know to when be I think of, they're monogrammed. Yeah. They're, so they're, it, yeah. it takes time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I know. That's a super fan. So I know during the Thanksgiving holiday break, that's when I order them every year. I see. I think that's amazing because you know when I think of Christmas, what? oh, about December seventeenth, I realize <laughs> I need to start shopping. Well, <laughs> well, when, so you, you know what? And, 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 oh, you some know of what? our presents never make it. Yesterday there was a present where I had to tell Abby, "This is coming yeah. at some." Well, point. my husband right. has done that too. He, I mean, but it's hard doing that. I, I envy you. Why? I envy the because I'm okay with that. I don't give a. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my youngest son, who is adorable, he has typically, this year he made progress, but typically he gets up Christmas morning and he prints out Amazon um, gift certificates. Oh. But here's the advantage to that. It's usually a really generous gift certificate because he feels so guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so we get like fifty dollar gifts. That's okay. But That's this it. year he actually made two presents into the wrapping stage. Oh, I was very impressed. Well, my daughter, my oldest daughter, made all of her gifts. Oh, Lord. for us, she she, takes she, after you. she crocheted nice. this beautiful, gorgeous blanket. For okay, me. she's it's, a super fan. I'm, she it was beautiful, and she made some sugar scrubs. It was all about pampering me. So she made all this. She made some body butter. And this is when she's just graduated from graduate school, moved across the country with her boyfriend, getting adjusted to living with the boyfriend and trying to find a job. So yes. like mom, a super fan. Yeah, yeah okay. super fan. I think you're a super yeah. fan. So all of her gifts were, she put a lot of work into them. Because she made, and Mario didn't know this, but he's not listening today. Uh, but she got, she created a, um, a, 
all of these pictures of my husband and our son. Aww. And she made it into a puzzle, so he doesn't know <gasps> it. So he's working on this puzzle. Oh, and he so doesn't know what it he is? He doesn't know that it's going to be a huge oh, picture. Oh, nice. So she has this this board, so it'll be a picture frame. Oh, my but it's, God. Yeah, so. And you know, what you have to know is that Mario, this baby was like the thing. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because he didn't have any Because Reagan has two older oh, children, okay. and Reagan doesn't really have a kid. But this is like... And Reagan oh. is an old lady. So Reagan this, is not an old lady. She's not an old lady, but old ladies carrying a baby. So it was... A this really will be special. Mario's yeah. only child. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 yes. Thank God. It worked out. Well, my wife's the same way. We have, we have uh, my uh, youngest daughter, Gabby, is yeah. 21. Well, will be 21 next week. And our oldest son in the family will be 41. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. You, well, you see. So, Gabby yeah. was the. Because uh, Ashley is 20. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 Well, Ashley yeah. was, is 26 and Maddox is 18 months. Mm. Good God. That's, so, yeah. yeah. Y'all are making me tired. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's I the super fan. I think we've designated you. The caterer, that could be that could be either one of you. That means you're the one who's always working. And, you know, Terry Murphy is a caterer. Yeah. No question. No question. <laughs> the social media butterfly, you're always taking pictures of the event. I no. did not. No. No. I, no. no. My, my niece and brother. Are that yes. the event planner, and that is the person who, like, you have the holiday music playing in the background. You have all the games. You that's you, me and you Ashley arrange to go caroling. See, I think that's a super fan too. It's yeah, me I would think so too. Ashley is yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Greg, you seeing yourself in this yet? No. The no. Grinch? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is it, let me ask you something. Is it easy to be a Grinch when you have kids? Well, it's it's. It's harder to be. Uh, I, I'm not as bad about it as I used to be. Before I had kids, I was like the worst person to have at any really? holiday thing because it's where can I go to avoid everybody? Where can I go out here? <laughs> like I can, I can go in this room and just watch whatever game is on, whether it's basketball on Christmas or football on Thanksgiving. Or, or oh, just I, retail ruined a lot well, of holidays yeah. for me because <laughs> when I did get to go to holiday get-togethers. It was usually just because I had the day off from work. But now you have the magic of Santa in your life, so you can't beat the Grinch. Yeah, it's 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 better now than now that I have children. <laughs> yeah, wait till they're 12, and the <laughs> gifts are no longer fun. Okay, the kid at heart? Is this you, Franco? This is You know, uh, I can bust into that every once in a while. I don't mind doing it, We have, and I have some fun doing it. Bubbling know. over with excitement? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. The football fan. I'm not, My husband. I'm not. Are there Chris, Are there football games on Christmas? There, there mm. are uh, basketball games that really? on Christmas. On Thanksgiving, there's the football game. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, I think I, I think that's bad because you know what? Those players and they're they're not having Christmas because they're having to work. Yeah, I agree I think with that's you. Terrible. The know it all. Um, oh. This is the person who like, was a secret gravy recipe used in well, the see, finest some, five star restaurants. That's probably me. <laughs> that I don't I don't think that but I think that when you are somebody that tries to be well read, someone that wants to be knowledgeable about a thing, and then people ask you questions, you come right. across as a you come across that way. Yeah. So if you and I can have a conversation about pasta, yeah. you and I can have a conversation about politics, you yeah. and I can have a conversation about the Kardashians, okay, you know every damn thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean <laughs> yeah. I mean so you know, sometimes I, I purposely go somewhere and I say, okay, you're going to shut the hell up tonight. So she's a know-it-all super fan. <laughs> and I don't want to know every, you know what I'm saying? I, don't I know, know exactly what You know saying. what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah. you come across yeah. a certain way. Well, if you could condense it down to where it's it's not a, a, a day-long thing. So, you know, the other day, <laughs> on, on Saturday, uh, my stepson was asking me about the, you know, connecting the dots between today's food and the food from, you know, Roman times. Well, there's like a thousand of those that I can connect the dots to say, well, this is why our A1 sauce came from, you know, things like this. Right. So those types of things. And he yeah. genuinely likes that stuff. And we had a long conversation. And I do, too. I yeah. like to hear yeah. it. I do, too, yeah. because I, I like love to, to hear, hear it. Stuff. And I want to know. Yeah. Because I'm interested. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, and I'm interested who... in something other than myself. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, I would can... be sitting at your feet going, really? But see, you are an expert in that field. Well, so I wouldn't right. have I, a You know what? I love that part of it, the history and the mystery of food. I love that. I love those types of things. And so, so when you find something, you know. Man. Tell us about the A1 sauce. Because, you know, we do need to impart <laughs> a little bit of wisdom. So my on theory this show. about the A1 sauce is uh, back in Roman times, they used to do a fish sauce that was okay. called guarum. 
and it was a very sort of pungent kind of a fish sauce. But salty. they would have salty. Yeah. And they and, and they've actually found it in archaeological digs. Really? But they uh, would use this on, on everything. Primarily back in those days, they would use a lot of spices, a lot of flavoring like that to sort of hide the flavor of rotting meat. And things, you know. <laughs> so, uh, very but, attractive. But it's it, not coincidentally, but it sort of evolved to where um, – the A1 sauce that we see today actually has anchovies in it. A lot of the same, a really? lot of the same ingredients, and it's easy to connect those dots. That's cool. Yeah. And it's so sort of. Does that mean that the makers? I mean, that basically what flavors food through the centuries is pretty much the same thing. Essentially, yes. Uh, there was a time, you know, sort of in the before the Renaissance when people were experimenting with a lot of different botanicals to try to find. Flavors, mm -hmm. different flavors. A lot of people died. <laughs> like, oh, shouldn't eat like, that yep. one, you know. Don't eat that. Yeah. No problem. But they did that again, primarily to sort of mask flavors and because uh, preserving was just there was. You know. So you know what has always fascinated me, and this is a, you two can totally get this, is that how you know, and I don't know whether it's from schooling or just from experience, but how you know what a dish needs. That facet. I have a son who has that talent, and he yeah. can. He, could, he just knows, and he has not gone to culinary school, but he's worked in a lot of restaurants. Gabby's like that. She can pick out ingredients. She can just pick it out. Right, yeah. I don't because think that is something that school can teach you. I think yeah. that is... It's just taste buds? Yes, it's taste buds. Well, I was no making... One... I made lasagna, and I did make it from scratch, not Stouffer's, on Christmas Eve. It's a traditional Christmas Eve Super. thing, cause, right? Because yeah. you're going to church, you don't got time, you're tired. So I made a salad. Well, I, we didn't think about dressing. And I don't make dressing from scratch usually. So I had a bottle of ranch with a little bit, and I had a bottle of raspberry vinaigrette a little bit. Well, I combined them. And I needed you guys and your tongues because, boy, I tasted that stuff, and I went, mmm. So as long as they're so cream-based, you can combine them all. Yeah. yeah, as long as they're oil oh. and vinegar-based, you can combine them all. You can find anything. We used to call them suicides. You could take <laughs> yeah, you could take what... any any oil based dressing and combine it essentially. Right? So not ranch and raspberry. No, no, I ranch. Would, no. I do that. it was okay. not good. Yeah, that's you a, really, stretch that that's sort of one out like, with yeah, the fruity like vomit. I would oh take. yeah, <laughs> it was. Oh my kinda, god. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did notice there was a lot of salad left over, but the lasagna went fast. We'll be right back on the Mary Beth Conley Show. It's Women's Wisdom Wednesday. <laughs> We'll be right back with more of the Mary Beth Conley Show on KWAM The Voice. This is Clark Howard. There's a new report out from J.D. Power that finds that roughly 80% of consumers want to get financial advice from a bank. Like investing kind of advice? No, 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 never. Banks are good places for you to park your money temporarily. They're a good place for you to have a checking account. But don't ever think about doing investing and getting financial advice about investing from a bank. Banks offer investment products that have massive commissions and ongoing expenses. And you don't want to let them lure you in to doing any investing there. We have a wide variety of ultra-low-cost investment houses you can go to. I have a list of them on Clark.com. And you want to stay away from the bank for anything like that. Welcome to A Dash of Salt, where we debunk myths and shake up what you think you know about salt. Myth number one comes from KDP. Um, salt is bad for everyone on the planet, and no one even needs that, because, like, I read that on a blog. Okay, let's shake it up. Here's the truth. Everyone needs salt. Like we need water, salt is essential to human life. It can help keep our muscles strong and brain running smoothly. In fact, it's actually one of the nutrients that makes every cell in your body function. And that's pretty important, right, Katie? Um, I guess... Everything's better with a little salt. Find out more at a littlesalt.org. The Westwood One Podcast Network, The Daily Wire's Ben Shapiro Show. I'm not a big believer that releasing criminals from jail tends to end with them in happy jobs because just generally the recidivism rates are extraordinarily high. With that said, is there a case to be made that people are being kept in prison for too long? The Ben Shapiro Show. Download and subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and the Westwood One Podcast app. Free, free from the Westwood One Podcast Network. 
Hey, are you pregnant and need health insurance? Yes, I'm really in need of insurance. Have you heard of the 10 Care Presumptive Prenatal Program? No, what is that? It's a program where pregnant women can get 62 days of temporary Medicaid insurance coverage. Wow, I didn't know about that. Thanks. For more information regarding the 10 Care Presumptive Prenatal Program, contact the Shelby County Health Department at 901-545-8722 or log on to shelbytnhealth.com. Funding for this was provided by the Tennessee Department of Health. Hey gang, this is Ben Shapiro. Beginning January 7th, we're launching a brand new radio show. It's going to be awesome. We've got the same hot information, great commentary you've come to expect. Plus, we're going to bring you the nation's best thinkers to discuss issues that concern you. More of the things you've come to expect from the best radio show on the planet. I can't wait to bring you my opinion on a daily basis. It all starts January 7th, 2019. The Ben Shapiro Show. Weeknights 6 to 8, starting January 7th on The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Talk radio for the Mid-South. The Mary Beth Conley Show on KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. KWAM, streaming live at kwamthevoice.com. <laughs> and welcome back to the Mary Beth Conley Show. It's Women's Wisdom Wednesday with a touch of testosterone today in the people of Greg Ratliff. He's always here, actually. But he has some support in the testosterone area with <laughs> Franco Cataldo, francositaly.com. Reagan Oglesby here, as always, <laughs> ladyfingerscateringcompany.com. And boy, if you could only hear the conversations we have during the break, <laughs> this one involved surrogacy and Mary Beth in the same sentence. Okay, Anastasia, Patricia, and Christine, thanks for joining us on Facebook Live. You can join us on the dial at FM 107.9 or AM 990. Online, kwamthevoice.com, or Facebook Live, the Mary Beth Conley WREG show. I mean, page. <laughs> God, or show. You know, we've it's been program. bringing the Mary Beth. You had too much Mary Beth. <laughs> See how pretty that looks now? I like Isn't that so pretty? Color, yeah. Franco made a cocktail for me. Oh, Just for you. If you were not married and I wasn't married, man, we'd be in trouble. Because <laughs> that's a sweet thing to do. Nobody ever made a cocktail Nobody's for ever me. made a cocktail. I'm telling you. Oh. And named it after. <laughs> I tell I you, I made I'm one easily... for my wife one time. I called it Sherry. Uh-uh. Oh. 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 Man. <laughs> Okay, well, you know, I'm a cheap day. Drinker. Name the cocktail after me and I'm yours. Okay, so today is National Candy Cane Day. Oh, wonderful. There you go. They have been around since 1670. Hmm. I don't know where I don't know where Google finds this information, but supposedly that was the year. And who did they talk to to say it was in 1670? I do not know. But you know the tradition of the candy cane? It's a shepherd's hook, and right. the red and white is the blood of Christ and the purity, right? Wow. You know that, I right? I didn't know that. Oh, see, that could have been a trivia question. I learned something today. There didn't I go. tell you I always impart wisdom on this show? Yeah. <laughs> Stop Same as the barber's pole, right? Good. You know what the yeah. barber's pole is, right? Well, I didn't know it's red and white. Does it you have something white? to do? No, I don't. Because barbers used to do uh, surgery. Really? And they would hang bloody rags on a pole to let really? them know they did surgery. That's why the pole's red and white. Wow, that's very Creepy, attractive. but a very sort of, uh, you know, Victorian. They like weird wow. stuff like that. Wow, so. not necessarily good surgery. <laughs> you know, I would expect there's some some barbers who still do surgery, you know. Yeah, I know. Wow, well, see, there you go. You got two facts today. Plus, you got the recipe for the Mary Beth. You're going to have to listen back to the Facebook Live if you want to hear that. Okay, so um, here's a fun fact. They have not always been striped. What were the early, early vintage candy canes? What color were they? <clears throat> they would have to still be red because of the blood of Jesus, right? Well, I, I don't know. Is that your answer? Is that your final answer? Yes. <laughs> he looks guess... forward to doing that. <laughs> this will be your last buzz in <laughs> I'm, going with, I'm going with green. Green? Yes. When because, did Jesus' blood ever become... Well, but mint is green, and they had to make it minty, didn't they? So I would well, think it's... Oh, you see, you're so smart. That they is, didn't have food coloring right. to that's change. You know, that is pretty logical. They were, however, all white. Oh. Snow white. I should have given Greg a chance. Mm. But he probably knows it because he is, as we've established, <laughs> trivia king. the idiot savant of trivia. <laughs> yes, trivia king. He's a trivia king. Okay, so... Um, how many calories? They're about the typical candy cane is about five inches long. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that because I think the small ones are like maybe three, like this. Yeah. yeah. Go down a little bit. Go down. The a smaller bit. ones are smaller mm -hmm. than that. Go on. Yep. Nope. Yep. 
right there. Oh, please. There's never been a can from top I just to had bottom. some. Yeah. They were that small now. They're, Mini candy Let me tell you something. They're getting cheaper and cheaper with the product. <laughs> yeah, they're like the ice cream that suddenly went from 12 ounces right. to 8.5, yeah. and they think you won't notice. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean the product keeps getting smaller, but they charge the same they amount? Charge. No, you don't say. Yeah. 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 I used they're cheaper. I did a, con- yeah, exactly. I did a consumer report on that years ago. Okay, so... There, there. It says the average is five inches long. How many calories, roughly? Greg, you start. Two hundred and ten. Sorry, buddy. <clears throat> Did we just say he was trivia king? He is. He just he I'll threw go, that I'll, one. I'll go with ninety. Nutritional I'm go stuff. With, I don't uh, know. Eighty either. calorie between seventy and eighty calories. Seventy and eighty. Franco. Ninety. Oh, y'all, really? <clears throat> you're you're kind of letting me down here. What but is? and I'm the one who's a little tipsy on the Maryville. <laughs> Of course, I, I should have put a key together. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> that would be very. If I don't, if I can't find spearmint in the store, that's it, it'll work, right? Yeah. They're only fifty calories and oh, no wow. fat I, I or thought cholesterol. it was like low. I thought it was low. Mm. Oh, sure you did. That's why I you said were closest. Between, you I, yes, yeah. So give me a ding for being the closest. <laughs> yeah, I think she gets that. You yes. know, I think Greg gets two hundred to make Reagan feel better. He does about herself. I, think he did. I just figured since my kids enjoy them so much, they have to be unhealthy. So, <laughs> well, speaking of which, and somebody actually has done a survey on the most common way to eat them. So, what is the according to this survey? Fifty-four percent of children eat their candy canes. How, Franco? Tail first. Tail. Bottom okay. first. The hook uh, first. Oh. I would say the bottom first. I okay, say well, that's first. not covered in this survey. Oh. Okay. Um, that's, a, that's a good answer. I'd say bottom first, too, because you can hold on to the hook. Right. No, but see, but I how, see Do kids... they crunch them or do they suck them? Oh, they make a little point. They suck them to the point. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ding, ding, yeah. ding, ding. Yes. You were going to say? Obviously, no one <laughs> Did she start out the show by saying 2018 sucked? <laughs> this disc, we're going to suck this thing all the way out. <laughs> <laughs> According to the... <laughs> you know, you just get some good stuff on this show. You'll go home tonight and say, guess what I learned today? And all your dinner partners will go, shut up. <laughs> Obviously, you listen to that stupid show at noon. According to the National Confectioners Association, how many candy canes are made every year? And I'm going to give you a hint. 90% of them are sold between Thanksgiving and Christmas. That really doesn't give you a hint, but no, give it a guess. Franco? Um, It'll surprise you. I'm going to help? say $2 billion. Oh, maybe it won't surprise you. Reagan? I was going to say $1 billion. Ooh. I was just going to say like $10 million. <laughs> Wow, Reagan. Two dings in a row, one point two billion. Boom, 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 boom. Wow! I Yay. thought that was way high, y'all. Wonder how many of those people, like my family, used to do buy candy canes every year, and then they just sat in a box. Oh no, yeah. my mother, well, my mother, <laughs> yeah. she never bought them. She just said, "I was like, don't eat that candy cane because it's been around for about fifteen years." <laughs> candy canes she are the them candy right corn. The, of the ones, Christmas. the ones that were on her tree, she would hang them. She would pack them back up like they were Christmas yep, decorations. Like Christmas. Christmas. Like, <laughs> the most local talk in the mid south. This is KWAM Memphis. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by TheraWorks Relief. I'm Pam Coulter. Nobody's calling it a Santa Claus rally, but stocks climbed as much as three percent today after. Dr-